part of this stuff send it there'll be no issue okay and okay let me start off the stuffs sql is structured query language i have already mentioned this thing in the first day of the class what is sql and why we require sql 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 is structured query language it should be used on top of uh, rdbms that is relational database management system and why this is used uh, actually we are storing the data in relational database management system so to traverse the data or any kind of creation of the data uh, any kind of manipulation of the data we are doing this we are using that particular language sql okay but based on the different function of sql we can segregate the sql topics into ddl dml dcl tcl dql okay so today we'll be focusing on top of ddl and dml and you can also see uh, why i mean those are i mean there are seg segmentation i mean ddl means it will be creating the tables dds means data definition language so in sql the particular query is used to update anything related to any table structure that is called ddl just like create statement has a create keyword it will be helpful for creating table drop drop means it will be dropping table from the database okay so table is the most unit part i mean uh, the small smallest unit of the database we are storing the data in tables and this is the most important stuff so the first three or four days we will be talking only on top of the table only uh, each of the language will be doing on top of a table only okay not a single table they maybe multiple tables are be using and maybe at the end of the session we'll be trying to create some view and view should be creating on top of tables multiple tables can be using to create a single view then store procedures those are a bit advanced level things so we'll be starting that thing later so as of now we'll be concentrating everything on top of a table so in ddl statement how to create a table we'll be learning the things in create statement how to delete a table from the database that means it should be from drop statement alter means if we want to update any kind of tabular structure the table is already present in the database we want to do any kind of update in the table update means not update any kind no, not to update any kind of data over there it simply update on top of the tabular structure maybe we are trying to add a new column maybe we are trying to update the data type of column and this kind of stuffs we can do by the alter command okay similarly truncate means we will be deleting all the records from the table okay uh, there will be no actually no table deletion table should be there but the data should be null there should not be any data in the particular table truncate command should be helpful for this scenario next i'm coming to dml dml is for data manipulation language when our table is ready table structure is ready then we can insert data that means the rows okay and dml is responsible for doing that stuff data manipulation language we can insert new records the, if there is any existing record we can update that record if the record is not useful we can delete that particular record so this kind of operation we can do in dml statement okay so just a basic difference ddl means any language depends i mean uh, that should be helpful for uh, anything attached to tabular structure that is ddl and dml it's not related to tabular structure it's related to data inside the table so dml is responsible for that stuff after that i'll be covering dql dql i'll be starting from tomorrow onwards uh, it should be a vast chapter it should take uh, two to three days to be covered dql is the select query data query languages so there we are not manipulating any data inside the table but 
we can show the output based on our requirement. We can manipulate the data output. <laughs> on a particular table, we can manipulate the data output and show the same thing in our desired manner. But we are not changing any tabular structure. We are not changing any data inside the table. That will be covered by in DQ well. DCL and TCL, it, it is not very much important. It's also important, but not very much as of now from our data engineering perspective, but will be definitely covered after those steps. I'm not just highlighting these points as of now. Okay, so let's concentrate on these two topics, DDL and DML for today. Okay, moving to my next slide, it is DDL, data definition language. Those stuffs I have already mentioned, DDL is especially responsible for creating, uh, not only creating, any kind of tabular structure, creation, modification, any stuffs. So create, create a tables means I can create a new table, alter a table, I can alter an existing table, truncate a table, I can truncate all the records in a table, but the tabular structure should be there. Drop a table means it can drop the entire table structure from the database. If I drop it, I cannot able to find that particular table anymore. Okay. Okay. I'll be going to the hands-on stuffs on top of DDL now, but before that, I'll try to cover this thing as well. So those are very important stuffs. Data type, constraint, and column length. Why this is important though everything is required, all those three things are required while creating a DDL statement. Okay, suppose I'm going to create a DDL, I mean uh, a table structure with a create statement. Create statement means I'll be creating a table. Okay, creating a table. While creating a table, I need to mention the column names. And while mentioning the column name, we also need to mention and we need to think about what that particular column will consist. So that defines the data type too. Suppose I'm just trying to uh, create a column which should consist some character value. Character means uh, the sentences and all. So there it should be varchar data type. So you have this kind of data type available. Just like integer. If I define the column is integer in nature, then we can insert only integer data over there. If we want to push any other data in the DML language for that particular column, it should be throwing an error. I'll be showing that stuff while doing the hands-on. Suppose I have put a create statement for a particular column, I have declared this thing as where care, or I have declared this thing as integer. Okay, but while inserting the data in the into the table, I just inserted a varchar. Varchar means a string kind of data type over there for that particular column. Immediately it should be throwing me an error because I have declared or the particular column is having defined with a different data type, but I'm trying to push another data type's data over there. So then it should be throwing an error and uh, I'll be, I mean, that should not be compatible in nature. So we just need to think about it, what kind of data type I'm going to push. So based on that, we need to design the create statement as well. Okay, with data type column length will be also coming. Suppose I'm declaring where cat for a particular column. So we also need to declare how much, what is the maximum column length for that where cat means the maximum uh, value the column, column can contain. Okay, suppose I'm declaring string, I mean, varchar data type, it should contain 50 character. So I cannot insert more than 50 character inside the column. So this is, I'm just creating a predefined sizes of the table into the database memory allocation. Okay, more than that length, it will be throwing an error. Okay. I'll be showing this thing, what is data type, how data type uh, can be pushed and how column length can be written in the DDS statement. That is very simple. And the next topic is constraint. Constraint, uh, so constraint means while declaring a tabular structure over there, 
we can put some constraint for different columns. Suppose one the constraint name is not null, means that column cannot be empty. Suppose I'm trying to insert a record, maybe that particular record doesn't have value for all the columns. Okay, what I'm trying to say means, uh, let me open an Excel. Suppose I have created a table. Mm, okay, let's start with student. Student. So the uh, table uh, data should be just like column name should be student ID. Student name. Student class. Well, let me put simply class. Okay. And... Uh, Student, okay, suppose dress code, date of birth. So it's a student table. I'm storing all the student related information over here. So when our DDL is ready, DDL is ready means I have declared all the columns and those are the finalized table with us. Now I'm going ahead with the DML statement. That means we are trying to insert data to this table. Over there, I'm trying to insert the data. The data got inserted in student ID. It was 34, student name. Some student name has been inserted over here. Class, class is integer, so I put it in this way. Student dress code, just putting something, it's character in nature. So in data, but I'm just putting sub value. Okay. Suppose in this manner. Oh, sorry. Okay. In this manner. Suppose I have imposed some constraint. Okay. So data type, it's clear. Correct. I mean, I have declared student ID as an integer. That's why I am able to push integer data type. It's character data type for student dress code and student name. So I have to insert character over here. A integer can be character as well. I can also put this thing in this manner, 67. But it's taking over here as an integer. Let me put, you can see now 067 is a character. Although it's an integer data type, because in Excel, integer should be starting in the right hand alignment, 34. But 67, you can see it's been started. A character should be always started from the starting of the cell from this alignment. So that is fine. I'll be just showing this thing in hands-on in SQL. There'll be no issue. But the main issue is, I mean, main thing I just want to impose that uh, the particular constraint. If I want to put a constraint on top of student ID column, that the student ID column cannot be null in nature. So I can put not null constraint on top of student ID. Then we suppose I'm trying to insert some records. So uh, I have put 34 over here. Student name I have also put over there. Class I think I have also put it there. Student dress code I do not have with myself or I do not did not get the thing from the student, particular student. Maybe he or she is a new student. I haven't received the information from their side. Even data, but two. As this is not a not null constraint, so we haven't put any constraint. So there should be fair if we do not insert any record for this one. I just inserted three records over here. I haven't inserted any record for here. But if we impose not null constraint for each of the column, then we must have to entry, must have an entry for that particular columns as well. Okay, so constraint, it will be imposing some rules on top of a particular columns. We can also impose the primary key for a particular columns or for a combination of columns too. Okay, so those are called constraint. Constraint means some uh, rules on top of a particular column. So, okay, I'll be showing this thing while doing the hands-on. I think that thing should be more clear to you. 
Okay, so let's cover up this thing in MySQL database. Okay, any doubt, any stuck point from anyone till now? If there is anything, please let me know, okay? Okay, so I'm inside the database. I have opened uh, MySQL Workbench over there. So this is the default database that I'll be working. So let me expand this database. I can see, okay, there's an option for uh, tables as well. Okay, one particular table, it's called temporary table temp. It's already created there. Okay, I'm not going to drop it. I'm just going to create a new table over here. As soon as the new table is created, you can see the new table over present over here as well. It should be available over here. Okay. So how to create the new table? Obviously, it should be a DDL and we should be using create statement. Create. Okay. Uh, okay. Few more things I just want to discuss. SQL will be learning SQL today. So SQL is not a case sensitive. So it's very much user friendly. Suppose you are doing create, you forgot to put C in small. There will be no issue. We can put either way. I mean, create C should be caps. Nothing should be caps. You can put this thing as a caps. No issue. So the particular keyword, SQL keyword or anything you are putting over there, there is, uh, it should not be. Uh, there is no such rule that we need to maintain the cases over there properly. It can be. It is not case sensitive language. So SQL is not a case sensitive language. It's case insensitive. Okay. That's the thing I just want to say. So I'll be now creating a table. Creating a table. The table name should be student. So we need to use create keyword. Create table. Table is another keyword create table the table name that i want to put so student table okay create table table name put open brace and close brace inside that brace we need to declare the column name one by one okay i'm just putting some more spaces so that i can include the column name over here uh, okay, so what should be the column name? Suppose uh, class. Okay, uh, class should be integer data type. So I need to put int. So the default value of integer size, for the integer size, there is a default value. It should be, I think four, I have forgot it. I'll be checking quickly. Integer default value should be eight or four. I'll be checking. It should be 8-bit long. So I'll be checking and let you know in a second. Uh, so class should be integer in nature. As it's a default size for integer, we no need to mention the size over here. Okay. Let's put roll number. Okay. Please remember uh, while creating the column name, generally we should not use spaces inside the column. We cannot use this kind of thing over here because over here the first field should be recognizing as the column name and the second field should be recognized as the data type so don't put any space i'll be let i mean in the advanced level when we'll be learning how to put space there we can we can declare i mean decide how to do that so as of now for the preliminary uh, lesson do not put any spaces just if you want to segregate the things, put an underscore there. Okay. So roll number, it should be always integer. So when one column is declared, put a comma and then class integer, then roll number, it should be all again integer in nature, then put a comma over here. Okay. Comma means I'll be inserting some more columns the last column when we have declared the last column in the table no need to put comma okay i'll be going to insert some more data and um, more columns sorry so suppose student name student name it should be where carry in nature 
and Parker, we must need to put the sizes. So student name cannot be exceeded more than 40 character. So I have put 40 over here. Okay. Uh, what can be the other things? Okay, dress code, I just told you. Dress color, let me put it color. Okay, it should be where cat too. Let me put that color should not be much more uh, length. I can put 10 as of now. Okay. Okay, so let's create those four columns. I'm not putting comma means that is my last column. I'm executing it. Selected everything. Or I cannot select. There is only single query. You can put a semicolon as well. We cannot put. There will be no issue. If we put semicolon means uh, the particular means semicolon putting semi, I will be telling why we need to put semicolon later. Okay. As of now, no need to put semicolon. Just try executing it. Okay. So it has been successfully executed. Uh, there is a log over here. I can click on that. Yeah. You can see this is the last statement that is executed. Okay. It has been successfully executed. That's why a green tick is been associated just removing the stops and let me refresh the left hand pane this panel yeah i refreshed it and you can see the new table student has been created okay just expand this thing expand the columns as well you can see those are the columns i have created by my query Okay, I can just tap on student. I can also see what are the different columns and what are the different data time associated with the columns. Okay, so these are the things. I can also put a not null constraint. Student is already created. Let me create another new table. Okay, so the table is already created. If I just going to run the same query again, it is showing an error. What is the error? Table student already exists. So I cannot create student table anymore. So if I want to modify anything, any columnar structure or anything, I need to use alter statement. This is one stops. And we can also do one thing. We can drop the table student and recreate it with the new version. I mean, new, new particular features, new columns and all. Okay, we can do either way. We can query the alter statement for the existing table or we can drop the table and create it again. There is various things as well we'll be learning. I mean, create or replace. That thing we'll be telling later. Just I'm giving a small hint. It's not a basic thing actually. Create or replace. It means if the table is already existing, it will be replacing that table. That means it will be dropping that table and creating that table once more. That's the concept. So it's the same concept. Drop and recreate. Okay. Let's create another table with having the same stuffs. Suppose student underscore one. The table name I'm just modifying a bit. Students, students underscore one. Okay. Why I have modified it? Let me add some constraint. You can add the constraint over here. After putting the data type or the sizes, we can put constraint. So each of the columns should be null in nature. Null means by default, the column constraint is null. So we can insert null value or we cannot insert any value or a particular record for that column and uh, for that column, correct. But if we want that that particular column's data should be mandatory. If I'm just going to insert a record, the, the particular column's data should be mandatory in nature. Then we need to put not null constraint. Okay. What are the different constraints? Uh, suppose roll number. We can also put not null over here. We can put another constraint called unique. That means the roll number should be unique. We cannot insert 
duplicate record in roll number. I'll be showing this thing. So I'm just imposing that constraint. <laughs> okay. Uh, student name. I'm not imposing any constraint for this two. We can, uh, okay, student name, let me put not null two. So student name cannot be nullable for a particular record. Dress code can be nullable. It's fine. I can I can define who what particular thing should be the primary key. Okay. So let's define primary key within bracket. Let's declare combination of class. Okay, let's put only roll number as of now. I'll be just doing class one record for everything okay primary key is roll number i'm defining this thing as a primary key too it's another way to declare the constraint okay so let me run this it is throwing an error uh okay it's an error to use near roll number okay fine so uh yeah so this is the last line so i need to put a comma over here Yeah, it's successfully created. Let me just refresh it. I can see student one has been created. Let me just select on top of that. You can see. I can see some of the constraint in the left hand panel. I cannot see not null constraint is visible over here, but while inserting the records, we can definitely see what is the power of not null. What is the power of unique? What is the power of primary key? Primary key, you can see it's been mentioned over here as PK for that roll number. And it's also marked as bold. Okay. So this is uh, the way we can declare the constraint as well while declaring the DDL. I mean, while declaring a create statement. Okay. Any doubt till now from anyone? creation of the table actually it's very simple uh, i think uh, most of you have uh, the experience of sequels and all so maybe it's very um, basic things for you it's you already are aware of that stuff but uh, if there is any stuck point or any doubt from anyone you can definitely ask me okay so create table is covered over here I'm just covering one more steps from DQL side that is called data query languages. It's simple select statement, select star from table. It's actually DQL. I'll be covering the select statement there, but I'm just trying to show this thing to you. This is select keyword is being used for checking the data inside the table. Select star star means all the columns should be visible at the output from is a keyword and table name if i just select and execute it i can see the table in columnar structure class roll number student name dress color we haven't performed any dml operation that's why no data has been inserted no record has been inserted to that table i'll be uh, trying to execute this statement again later after writing some dml operation over here okay first of all our table is created so ddl this create statement has been covered i'll be covering now the alter statement okay drop and truncate i'll be doing at the end okay so alter statement why alter is been used i told this thing earlier alter is been used when our table is already existed and we want to make a modification of the tabular structure what kind of modification suppose i want to add a new column okay let's pick up student id table i want to add a new column uh, Suppose student's guardian's name. Okay, guardian, guardian name. Guardian's name, I just need to include over here. 
so how to do that or students contact number any kind of stuff so we need to put alter keyword alter table table name that is student okay add if i just want to add a column just put add keyword put the column name suppose uh, contact number it should be integer data type int okay uh, for integer nothing to mention for size because for integer default database I mean data length is already mentioned so i'm just trying to execute it's been executed if i just refresh this thing over here okay i have added the thing in student table so just i'm selecting student you can see contact number has been updated okay so i i haven't touched i haven't done anything in the create statement i can do the this kind of change or this kind of modification in alter statement suppose i want to update something uh, so dress code dress color i need to update to dress code so what should be the command alter table table name uh rename dress color to dress code there is an issue uh rename i think i need to put form keyword no rename column give me one second let me try it dress color was okay uh from dress color to dress code i haven't used the right syntax over here yes so this is the right syntax uh rename then column i am renaming a column that's why rename column the existing column name dress color to the new column name dress code so now dress color has been updated to dress code i'm refreshing it you can see the new column has been updated to dress code even just doing a select start from student i can see yes it's been updated okay so this way we can update any tabular structure by alter statement uh we can add new constraint as well for the student table there was no constraint okay let me add some constraint let me declare primary key uh, on top of class and roll number so i'll be creating a composite key it's a combination of class and roll number i'll be creating the primary key allocation so alter table table name Mm, add constraint we need to put a constraint name suppose constraint name should be mm, uh, pk i can put it's it's it is user defined constraint name i can put anything and what is the constraint type it's a primary key primary key and it should be the combination of uh, class and roll number to put class roll number so i haven't declared a primary key for the student table so i'm declaring this constraint by an alter statement alter table table name add constraint i'm adding a constraint constraint name is pk underscore student and what the constraint will be doing it's a primary key in nature so primary key is a keyword and what should be the primary key it should be the combination of class and roll number let me run this it successfully executed there that's why no log has been generated so let me refresh it you can see both of the three two things has been highlighted the bold color class and roll number and they're showing as pk over here okay so those are the 
I mean, when the table is having data as well, we can run this kind of statement. Okay. Hope there will be no issue. While understanding, if there is anything, please tell me. Okay. Fine. So we have covered up create and alter statement. Drop and truncate will be coming later. Let me jump into DML statement. Now our table structure is ready. Okay. Uh, and I have, we have created two tables, student and student one. Uh, we have updated some data type as well. I mean, uh, column name, column data. We can update the data type of a column. Suppose uh, roll number is integer. Someone told me or the admin told me, don't put it integer, change the data type as well. We can modify it. So alter table, table name, modify column. Mm, suppose contact number. Then I can change the data type. Okay. This way we can run it and change the data type as well. So we can change anything related to table structure. We can go ahead with the alter statement. Okay. Now our table is ready. Student and student one table is ready. I just want to insert the record inside the student table. Okay. How to do that? That should be the DML language, data manipulation language. So we can do three things. I have also mentioned this thing over here. Insert, update, delete. So I can insert data inside the table. I can update the data. I mean, uh, whatever data has been inserted, I can update the data. I can delete the data. But DML cannot handle any kind of tabular structure there. It can handle only the data. That's why it's data manipulation language. Okay. So, what is insert insert statement? Let me start with insert. Insert it is the keyword. Insert into insert into table name. Okay. So I can put individual column names over here. I as of now no need to put column names. I'll be coming to this thing later while doing the advanced steps. Insert into table put values values is the keyword and put the braces opening brace open brace and close brace and put the put the data in this manner i mean i'm inserting inside the student i did not mention any column order over here that's why in the values part whatever data i'll be pushing I just have to maintain the proper structure for the student table. I can see this is the updated student table structure. We have class, roll number, student name, dress code, contact number. So you have to insert the data in the similar kind of manner, similar kind of order separated by comma. While inserting the record, if the data type is where care, we need must need to include the data inside single code. If this is integer in nature, then no need to put a single code. We can definitely put, but there is no mandatory steps to put it. If this is Bharka data type, if this is date data type, date data type, I haven't, I haven't go through the date data type as of now. Uh, another day will be allocated for date data type and all. So as of now, for Bharka data type, the data should be pushed with a single code notation. So let's insert the record. Uh, suppose class seven, the first field is class. Second field is roll number. Suppose roll number is one. Student name is where data type. So I have to include the data inside code. Okay, so the co uh, let me put uh, Rashmi, Rashmi, uh, what I can, 
उत्कुमारी ओके सो सेवन इज क्लास वन इज रोल नंबर रश्मि कुमारी इज स्टूडेंट नेम ड्रेस कोड लेट पुट ड्रेस कलर ओवर हियर सपोज रेड ओके सो इट्स कोरेस्पॉन्डिंग द सेम ऑर्डर क्लास रोल नंबर स्टूडेंट नेम ड्रेस कोड कॉन्टेक्ट नंबर आई कैन पुट और आई कैन रिमूव इट ओके लेट मी पुट सम कॉन्टेक्ट ओवर हियर एज वेल इट्स इंटीजर सो लेट्स पुट सम this kind of arbitrary contact number there will be no issue okay i'm trying to insert the record okay it has been inserted okay i can see i just select the same i i just run the same query the dql query select star from student i can see the data now available the same records what i have inserted over here Seven one Rashmi Kumari eight contact number. Okay, if I try to insert any other records, I can update these things over here as well. So roll number two. I'm putting Vikas. Vikas past one. Okay, his uh, his dress category is red as well. No issue. Ah, uh, let me put five, six, eight, nine, zero, three, four, five. Okay, this manner. It has been successfully inserted. Let me run this query again. Select star from student. Yeah, I can see the second record has been inserted. This null record they have been just pushed it. It's as per the MySQL things, so you can as of now ignore these things. Just check the value. Where the data is present. Okay, so this way we can insert the records over here. Ah, uh, so in this manner, I we can also do a bulk insert. But I'll be trying to mm, show this thing. I mean, uh, give this thing for you to check quickly. Then we can discuss this, the same thing tomorrow. As we do not, as we do not have much time to cover these things today. Okay. Uh, now I want to go ahead with update. So uh, suppose we have these two records. I want to update any kind of record from here. So how to update this thing? So. I mean, the for suppose uh, for Vikas past one uh, has as he's a male candidate. Suddenly they have declared that the male candidate they will be wearing blue dress. They will not be wearing red dresses. They have to wear blue dresses. So how I need to update the thing over here? So update table name. There should be a set keyword. Set dress code. Equal some setting. I'm just changing something with the ad hoc basis. I'm not inserting the entire set of records. Update statement will be helping us to update any cell element over here. I'm just doing update state student set dress code equal blue. If I run this statement over here, it will be updating. All the records inside the dress code equal blue, but this is not our requirement. I just want to update only this corresponding to Vikas past one. Okay, so as of now, how I how I can identify this thing, this particular row? Uh, I can identify the roll number two. As of now, there are two records only. Both of them are class seven. Roll number is different. His roll number is two. That's why I can identify the row as where, where is a keyword that can be used for filtering purpose. I'll be coming. What is filtering and what are the things later? Maybe tomorrow session. But just as of now, I mean, just keep a note over here. Where we need to put the where clause to put 
or impose the condition otherwise if i just execute it it should update all the records and it should be set all the records to blue but this is not our requirement we just need to update to blue only for the records whose roll number is 2 so where roll number equal 2 okay update student set dress code equal blue where roll number equal 2 let me run it it successfully executed let me run this statement again select start from student and to check the data you can see for because pass one the trace code dress code has been updated to blue so we can successfully able to update the data hope there is no doubt from anyone Okay, if there is any doubt or any stuck point, kindly stop me and ask me questions. Okay, for the DML, the last thing I'll be just doing, it's delete statement. I want to delete, suppose this record, again, the roll number two. So, uh, he has left the school. He has joined in another school. So, I just need to remove his name from the database. So, what should be the command? Delete from table name. Okay. Delete from table name. If I just execute this thing, it will be deleting all the records inside the table. But I just want to delete based on condition, this one. So delete from student where role number equal two okay i'm just executing this so roll number two means this record it successfully executed let me check the same table again select star from student i can see the second record has been deleted from there and only we have the first record so the second record has successfully deleted from here okay so this is how the delete things works so we have covered insert how to insert new records inside the table how to update some existing record inside the table what are the keywords how to use that what are the delete statement why the delete statement is been used to delete the record from a table the question may arise is if you are just going to face any interview while doing delete or update statement why we should put the where clauses this is because if we do not put where clauses update and delete would be occurring for all the tables records it should be imposing the thing on top of every table records so that's why be careful we need to put the where condition being update and delete but if we just want to do this thing intentionally, we can definitely do this thing. If we just want to change dress code for all the students, then there'll be no issue. We can do this thing in a single go by putting the update statement. Okay. Now, two things are left from the DDL side. I'll be covering this thing by uh, today only. One is drop, another one is truncate. So drop and truncate. Let me truncate it first. So truncate means I can truncate all the records. I can remove all the records at a single go. Why I'm mentioning single go? Because in the delete statement as well, I can also delete the records as well. But if we just perform delete query, delete statement, so delete will be removing the rows very slowly. Only one by one row will be deleted from the database. But for the truncate, it will go ahead with a single go. Because truncate is a, truncate is a DDS statement and delete is a DML statement. This is the only difference between truncate and delete. Okay. Uh, let me do a truncate operation. How to do that? 
truncate table table name student i'm just doing this thing truncate table table name it's executed let me just run the same query again select start from student i can see no records are now present nothing is present now so we have truncated it if i just try to now the drop statement if i just try to delete the entire table from the data set it use drop statement drop table table name over here so the table has been dropped i cannot find the table over here i can see no table has been present with the student name if i just try to run it it's now throwing an error table data data training student doesn't exist that particular table is not existed in that particular schema data data training schema database it doesn't exist that's why it's showing error because we just drop the table from the database itself that is the reason okay so this way we can drop the table from a database any doubt any stuck point from anyone is it clear to everyone so if we have like uh data of like 100 students how do we add at a time like do we need to sit and type everything or like how okay so your question is if we want to insert 100 of students data mm -hmm. over here so further we have to write it one by one i mean manually or uh, any other way to insert it uh, are you telling the same thing yeah yeah yeah, as of now, for manual insertion, we need to write this command. But there is an option of bulk insert. Okay. okay. So I'll be giving this homework to you, actually. Uh, how to do the bulk insert. You can check it from Wave or any other thing. And you can tell me how to do bulk insert. Obviously, we need to put the commands for each of the rows. That is fine. But we can do a single execution. All the records should be inserted. So that is called bulk insert. Please check it by your side and uh, we can check this thing tomorrow from you. If uh, you are able to get it, otherwise I can, I want to show you. To you. Okay, yeah, bulk insert is definitely possible uh, for your, <laughs> to answer your questions, yes, bulk insert is okay. definitely possible. We can go ahead with 100 of rows in a single execution, but we need to mention everything over here. You can try to select it and go ahead with a single click. It should be possible. By this kind of insert statement, Generally, uh, in the tables, in the I mean, when we are live in a project, there are ETL tools to do that same. But as we are the beginner, we are learning these things in SQL windows in this manner. Over here, we can we have to definitely put this kind of values. But we can do this thing at a single go, single execution button click. That thing I'm just needing for you, from you at tomorrow's. I'll be giving some homework to you. To check it it's not a big deal actually it should hardly take five to ten minutes just recap everything whatever we have learned over here today and uh, try to search in web and get some more info so that your uh, knowledge should be much more i mean stronger as well okay any other doubt from anyone yeah tanuja thanks for the questions and uh, any other questions from anyone if there is anything okay i hope no so that's all for today's session actually i'll be covering some more stuffs in dml for tomorrow as well as i'll be checking the uh, question answer in tomorrow's session uh, and uh, the first thing we'll be starting in tomorrow with the dql stuffs too okay so that's all for today's session uh, whoever haven't installed it i think tanuji you are not able to install it properly uh, okay, Shagun, you told you have installed. So, can you check with offline if it is possible with you? Is it possible to check uh, anyone will help you offline? If not, then I can guide. I'll not be actually, I'll be just uh, doing the same thing. Uh, I mean, start a reinstallation from the beginning. 
Yeah, I have tried it. I've uninstalled and everything, and I've tried installing it. And uh, I also tried uh, starting up the server, but it, uh, it just it's having says the same that, issue. Yeah, it's showing the same issue. Okay, okay. Then uh, let me check it. Uh, let me stop the recording. Okay, and the other persons, uh, you are feel free to drop. Uh, we already covered the session for today. Let's connect tomorrow. I'll be 